Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Hello, karibu sana, karibu sana, karibu sana. It's another wonderful day. It's another wonderful Saturday, the 5th of February 2022. And we are on Kenya Diaspora Live. And my name is Esther from Leicester. Karibu sana, karibu sana. So today we are going to do a very interesting topic based on the requests that have been made by some of you and i believe it's one of the best books that we'll be looking at we will only start at an introductory part after setting the scene but just for those who are joining in karibu sana karibu sana and for those who are new on this program it's called the spices of life spices of life stands for spiritual uh, physical intellectual commercial emotional and social aspects of life and currently we are looking at self-awareness on the basis of developing our spiritual potential and when I say spiritual potential I know there are so many things that go on around the world about maximizing our potential my way of looking at this is God is omnipotent God is omnipotent he has all the power so for we as his creation our job is to tap into that potential god is spirit god is spirit and therefore as a spirit he has created us with a spiritual element of our lives i know the most obvious signs that we see is our physical life but we have a soul and we have a spirit that will be another topic of another day but today i want us to be able to concentrate on the spiritual potential in the context of self-awareness and we will introduce the book of revelation chapter 22 as a mirror i call the word of god a mirror to which we can look at ourselves to be able to be self-aware but before we get started let me welcome everybody who is joining in so that we can get started together let me reduce the volume here so that i don't have interference so hannah kagelans you're tuned in, Karibu Sana, Marsh VG or Vaji, Karibu Sana, and you're tuned in from Thika, Karibu Sana. So continue to share with your friends, continue to tell them Esther is going to speak about self-awareness, and we are going to start with the book of Revelation because the word of God is a beautiful mirror to which we can be able to look ourselves from. Karibu Sana, Hana, Karibu Sana, VG. Karibu sana, everybody else that is joining in, Karibu sana, and let's get started together. I am hoping to stay only for an hour, and therefore, if I don't go to the whole book, we will be able to kind of just be able to introduce it. And may I encourage you also to be able to read Revelations chapter, Revelation, the book of Revelation, and Revelation is the revelation of Jesus, the book of Revelation chapter 22, and I will tell you why we are starting at the end in a moment so karibu sana and kegelens karibu sana mashvaji karibu sana masikegodo karibu karibu sana kasarani is well represented i am happy the united kingdom is also well represented here my name is esther from leicester and the program is spices of life spices of life and this is part four we have done part one part two part three part four some of them are very well related, some of them are not quite well related, but all of them are talking about maximizing our spiritual potential. So karibu sana, karibu sana, as we continue, yes, uh, hopefully we will be able to understand one another and we'll be able to move together and <laughs> understand this spiritual potential and how we can grow it. So before I move on, uh, let me just give you an overview of the aim and why I do this. The purpose for this fourth session is to expand on what spiritual potential is about and also extending self-awareness like I've mentioned briefly. By now studying the Bible, like I've said, I do call it the mirror of the Word of God. You know, in this life, for women especially, when we want to see how we look like in our physical sense, we go in front of a mirror and therefore we can be able to add a few bits of makeup here and there or straighten our hair and even sometimes a full length mirror to straighten our dresses and all that. I don't know about men, but I know women like their mirrors a lot. So for us to be able to have a spiritual awareness, like I've said, God is spirit. 
we can only look through God to be able to see our character and to be able to see how we feel about ourselves in relation to the matters of faith. So specifically, I will be looking at the book of Revelation, like as I said, and it's the last book. It was suggested to us by one of us, Purity Matu, and I like it because it's one of those books sometimes you want to avoid in the Bible because you hear it's apocalyptic book. And sometimes it has this imagery that is really can be scary. So it's not a scary book. If we read it slowly but surely, we will find that it's a book that reveals who Jesus is. And therefore, slowly but surely, I don't know how long it's going to take for us to study. We won't rush through it. We will go slowly but surely and be able to study that particular book. So, like I've said, we will start with the end in mind. I am a teacher by profession, and normally when we go to teach, we do the outcomes. What is it that we want out of this? What do we want out of the whole book of the Bible? What is it that we want out of life? To me, the Bible is a manual to life. And therefore, I want to know what is it at the end. I don't know whether the book of Revelation was the last one to be written, but according to our times, that's what appears at the end. And even if you were to give me any chapter of the book, I normally look at the end. Even storybooks, any book I read, I normally would look at the contents and then I go to the end just to see, to have an idea how it ends. Alternatively, I look at the back of the book to just have an overview of what it is all about because I would, have, I would like to have an idea whether it's a book worth reading or not reading. Therefore, we will start with the end in mind, the outcomes, what is there at the end of the book of Revelation. Is it worth for us to look at it? And then we'll be able to see it. Therefore, the last book of the Bible is Revelation chapter 22. But we will consider Genesis and other books alongside. We will consider Genesis and other books alongside. And in addition, we'll be maximizing different ways in which we can be able to maximize our potential. Specifically, I want to look at uh, what can we see or how can we see ourselves in this book of Revelation 22. The signal is a bit down, but hopefully it will be able to come back and we can be able to continue. I can see it playing up a little bit, but hopefully it will respect Esther. So you networks, I'm commanding you to be stable so that we can be able to continue with these readings and these chapters of Revelation. There we go. So... <laughs> We will be also explaining what spiritual potential is all about and how we can analyze it through the book of Revelation chapter 22. And meanwhile, Mary James Karibusana, thank you for joining in. Thank you for joining in. And keep on sharing to your friends so that they can also step in and not miss on this book. It's about life and I want everybody to be able to have life. I don't want anybody to miss on life. And that's why it's important for us to study these books and be able to know where we stand among us these uh, ideas of life today. Okay, yeah, last week we were looking at self-awareness. For those who are not here, I was looking at self-awareness specifically and how to maximize it. And the English dictionary that I used was saying, self-awareness is about being conscious. It's being about conscious or having the knowledge of one's character and feelings and when we look at the book of revelation we want to know whether our character is ready in the likeness of christ whether we are ready to meet christ whether we are ready to meet god how do we feel about god coming back or rather jesus coming back how do we feel about either the end of the world how do we feel about our own dying day are we ready is our character ready is it in the likeness of christ because if it's ready then we have nothing to fear. But if we know that we are not ready, then we will be afraid maybe because we want to make sure that we have made our ways and we have prepared ourselves better. I know this is a topic some people may not like talking about, but it's the reality of life. Death is inevitable. The end of life is inevitable. Like one of the preachers was saying, and I've said before, in a hundred years, none of us will be around. You know, the soon when Jesus said, I'm coming soon, we tend to think it's a very long way, but it's not a very long way. So it's important that we be aware of our character. Is it in the likeness of Christ yet? How do we feel about the whole situation? What do we know about the coming back of Jesus Christ or the end of the world, as some people may call it sometimes? 
So last time we raised a few number of points and we were saying self-awareness does help us to improve life. For example, like I've said right now, with the character, if you know where you are good, then you can work on that to maximize that. If you know where you're not so good, then you can be able to work out how you can better that part of you so that you can become a better person day by day, a person that is acceptable to God, a person that is acceptable in the community, a person that you yourself can be able to accept that. So if you don't have access to the first two parts, two and three, please look out on my profile on YouTube. You can also look out here on Facebook Live and be able to find the other programs that have gone by and be able to catch up on what is going on at the moment in relation to self-awareness. And this is a good starting point because we are starting a new book, so it will be very good for you. And in focusing more to self-awareness, one of the main questions I've been having in the last two sessions was, what do you really, really want? What do you really, really want in this life? Have you ever sat down and thought, what is it that I really, really want in this life? And to extend that, you can ask yourself, what about the life that is to come? What is it that I really want after this life? Do I want my life to extend the way it is or do I want a better outcome of my life? So I am looking at our deepest desires and it can be deepest desires on this side of life or the deepest desires in the life to come. So some of those questions we'll be able to answer as we study the book of Revelation. And you wonder why I ask these questions. It's the same, same questions that I ask myself. Yes, we are fading a little bit on the Wi-Fi, but hopefully you can still get me. Okay, let's get started now. And I'm going to set the scene in our everyday life. I'm going to set the scene with my own life to show you that these things that happen in life yeah, can affect us directly. And they do affect us directly. Everything that happens around us in as much as it's so physical, it is spiritual. I, I like one of the programs I watch that says life is spiritual. There are so many things that are happening around us. We may not be aware of them in the spiritual realm, but the reality is life is very spiritual in as much as it's very physical. We have those aspects of our lives that affect the physical being, which we take care of so much. And we also have those aspects of life that we take, we take care of in the spirit, or sometimes we do not take care of that aspect of life. So I'm going to start with my own life experiences and my own life testimonies to be able to show you that sometimes we are not conscious of who we are. We are not self-aware of who we are. We may be just going through the motions of life, like in an autopilot. We just move on with life because that's what we found going on and therefore we do not connect with that particular life. So as we get started, I'm gonna take you down my memory lane. I'm gonna take you down my memory lane and it's a couple of memories that I want to share about my own personal life. They may be fascinating to you, interesting, or maybe they are not interesting to you, but I, I will show you my own journey so that by the time we come back to Revelation, you will see why, you will be able to see why it is important that we we'll kind of look into our lives and be able to reflect through our lives using the word of God and be able to see where we are at, at the moment and where we were so many days ago. So I have a couple of memories and both of them will be related to what we are going to talk about today. But... Keep your focus on the water as I talk about this. Keep your focus on the food as well as I talk about this, okay? And then keep your focus on the word revelation, which can also be used interchangeably with discernment. Yes, so in future as we expand, you can see that revelation can also be known as designing or discernment in a way. Are we able to discern the things of God? Are we able to discern the things that are, are not of God? Are we able to have this revelation of what this is and what this one is, is not? So when I was around four years old, I was living in Kitale with my mom and my brothers and sisters. And we lived in a place called Kitale, Lainimoja. So for those who know where Kitale is, Lainimoja, that's where we lived. And we were staying in a kind of... A, bed sitter room <laughs> and my mom had two babies while i was just about four years old i remember very well 
uh, she had two babies uh, below me and I was also like a toddler in a way but just turning into four years old coming out of being a toddler and you can start calculating my age if you want that was in the 70s you can start but let's concentrate on the topic I'm saying concentrate on the water concentrate on the basic needs concentrate on the word revelation and concentrate on the word maybe discernment we can use it that interchangeably so we lived in a single room in a bed sitter and like i said i had a sister and i had a brother and they were about two and about six months old that's how they were but outside our compound there was a tap a water tap but this water tap in the middle of the compound i don't remember ever seeing water coming out of this tap so i used to see the shape of the tap Yes, because it had a pipe yeah, upright and then the tap was there, but it was always dry. I don't remember seeing water running out of that tap. I didn't even know it was a water tap. It's much later that I realized that's where water is supposed to come out. Because they used to leave uh, the saucepans out there, the Sufuria Ugali, with uh, water inside. They would leave it there and therefore, assuming... <laughs> Maybe sometimes they were expecting water will be there. Or if the water came, it came at night when I was asleep. So I didn't see the water. So see the picture of the water tap and see the picture of a little girl just fascinated by the tap and playing around that tap. And also, yeah, playing with the water that was left in the dishes there. That's what picture I had. So there was no water in the tap. In the bathrooms as well, there was no water. And even one of my the bathrooms, the outdoor bathrooms, my brothers, my older brothers, used it as a bedroom. Yeah, I remember we were sit we were living in a bed sitter, so my older brothers couldn't be able to stay in the same room with my mom. So they kind of took one of the bathrooms, fixed in a bed there, and that's where they were sleeping. There was no water. I don't know how the toilets operated, but there was no water. And I remember it wasn't a pit latrine. So I don't know how they used to flush the toilets. It wasn't any of my business. It wasn't any of my concerns. All I know, life continued. And it's when I'm reflecting back that I'm taken back to that place. And I remember there was a tap. There was no water. But I don't know where my mother used to get water. I have no clue. But thinking of it now, I can understand why I had a lot of infections. So thinking of it now... I can understand why I had a lot of infections those days. And the most vivid infection I can remember is that I had a ear infection. And there was pus coming out of my ear infection, or I mean my ears, all the time. And then I had other infections. I can remember there was a time I had an infection on my foot. So there were quite a number of infections that were coming through. <laughs> so I remember all these things. But it's because, one, we were living in very unhygienic conditions at that particular time. Still, remember, I'm talking about keeping an eye, keeping a focus on the water, keeping a focus also on revelation. So at this particular stage, I had no concerns of water. I had no idea what water does. But water is a very essential commodity. You and I know that it sustains life in very many ways. It keeps us hygienic. At the age of around five years old, I was taken away by my auntie. There was, there was a negotiation between my parents and my auntie took me away and I was taken somewhere called Kapsabet for those who are familiar with Kenya. And while I was there in uh, Yamumbi there, that's where, I mean, not before I got to Yamumbi, when I moved on to Kapsabet, thank God my ear infections were resolved. And the first doctor I ever saw was this ear specialist and they sorted my ears and thank God I'm not deaf today. I can hear nice and clearly. And those infection, infections, they never return. So let's go back to the water. When I moved to my auntie's place, outside her compound was a tap. Another very beautiful tap. I used to be just fascinated by the taps. But this particular one had water gushing out of it. And for me, it was a play station. So I wanted to play with the water all the time, all the time. But I wasn't allowed because... This particular time, I had started being given little shoes. I had nice pretty clothes, so I wasn't allowed to play with the water. But in the mornings, I was supposed to shower or to be washed in the cold water because in my auntie's house, there was water, okay? So I was always taken into the bathroom to be given a cold shower. And by the way, let me just welcome those people who are joining in. Rose Richardson, thank you so much for joining in. And Tracy Mumbi, thank you so much for joining in. 
Maggie Gathongo, thank you so much for joining in. Karibuni sana. As I'm giving you this story, some of you may be familiar with these places that I'm talking about. So I've moved from Kitale. I've gone to Kapsabet. Kitale, there is no water. Eldoret, there is water. No. Kitale, there is no water. Kapsabet, there is water. Now, I'm not allowed to play around this tap water, but the water was so good because my auntie had a very beautiful garden, one of the most beautiful gardens. She had all sorts of vegetables. She had coriander, she had carrots, so we had plenty of vegetables, but I didn't like eating vegetables. I loved eating fruits that came from the market. And there was an avocado tree just not very far from our house, and I loved those avocados because I could add a little sugar. I know some people use salt, but she taught me how to add sugar on avocados and that's where i fell in love with avocados why am i talking about this i've mentioned about water i've mentioned about food and you will see these things coming through into our book of revelation as we continue so naturally yes there were those things i loved i loved fruits but i didn't like vegetables i loved water but i didn't like the water when it was cold but water served its purpose now i am around seven years old now i'm not still conscious of what is happening around me water is not my problem it's there food is not my problem other people are catering for me so it doesn't matter what is happening around me in short <laughs> I had everything that I needed. In short, I had everything that I needed. We even had a little shop that had stocked everything that we needed in this shop. And therefore, yes, in terms of food, in terms of water, in terms of a place to sleep, all those things were available. I think the Wi-Fi is playing, but we will continue. We will continue fighting the networks until we tell this story. So in the shop, there were things that Esther wanted, really desired. Remember, I had asked a question last time and the week before. What do you really, really want? What is the desire that you have? I've been given everything that I need, but I wanted sweets. I desired sweets. I wanted biscuits. I wanted bread. So the things that I was not allowed to eat and I could see them in the shop, those are the things that I wanted as a child. So I became a little thief. I started stealing sweets, I started stealing biscuits, I started stealing sugar, I started pinching bread. Yes, sometimes I could be caught up, particularly one time when I stole biscuits, a whole packet of biscuits, and I ate, and I left the packet at the back of the shop. Yes, I, I was given a good beating, <laughs> you can imagine, and I was also told not to eat supper that particular day, but it, I didn't care so much because the temptation that I had for these sweets and the biscuits was overwhelming yeah i would repeat the same same thing even if i swore i would never do it i still went ahead and did something i reinvented ways of stealing i reinvented ways of picking things from the shop and eating them and i didn't feel guilty because i didn't have a guilty conscience i just thought that i was denied this then i can find ways of getting it and of course the parents my auntie didn't like that particular behavior and with time she took me to my grandma in Eldoret. I was about seven years old now, going to eight. And when she took me there, it was a totally different environment. Remember, when I was four, there was a dry tap. Now, when I'm about seven-ish, there is a tap that has water. When I'm now seven, going to eight, I'm taken to my grandmother's place in Eldoret. And it is a place that is newly developing there were no taps, there was no running water, but there was a spring, a very beautiful spring. When I think of it, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. The whole community used to go to this spring. The water was coming out of the rocks. The water was so clean. It didn't need to be treated. It was just beautiful water. There was life around that river. There were frogs, there were cows coming to drink, there were sheep coming to drink. There were beautiful trees that had a lot of fruits. And we as young children, we used to go there and the boys would climb up the trees and they would be throwing down the fruits and we would be enjoying them. Nobody taught us in that place which is good fruit, which is bad fruit. We just used to gather them, eat them. If they tasted nasty, we would say, Iyo ni matunda ya nyoka. That is snake's fruits. So we wouldn't eat those. Even though they looked so good and red, if they didn't taste nice, then we would say, Iyo ni matunda ya nyoka. They are poisonous. We wouldn't eat them. But with trial and error, I had all the fruits that I wanted. I, need, I didn't need to go to the market. We had the fruits growing from the bush. Now, come closer to where I am now, <laughs> rolling forwards. Yeah. Uh, 
in 2016 is the last time I went there and I just wanted to see the stream because I wanted to take my daughter to experience that stream. I, I wanted to take my nieces. I took them there because I was still fascinated by that stream and the way it was coming out of a rock, forming a little stream going down. And on the other side, one of the colonial people had built a very beautiful house because of that stream. But because he had vacated, he left the house and all the beauty that he had built there, he just left everything there. And the villagers kind of didn't really treat that house nicely. They demolished it. I normally feel very bad because that's the closest experience I had ever had of a very big mansion. But there we go. In 2016, I took my daughter there, I took my nieces there, and we found that the land where the, 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 the spring was had been sold away. So it had become private land. So you couldn't just go to the spring and fetch water anyhow. But the lady who was there was very kind and she allowed us to drink the water and it tasted so good, fresh from the rocks. It was one of the most beautiful spring water. So anytime I go into a supermarket and I see spring water, my imagination takes me back into the village to remember that particular stream that used to be a communal village. I mean, a communal place where we fellowshiped with other villagers. We did the laundry there. We fetched our drinking water there. We took our cows to drink there. It was just a source of life. That's where the village met. That's where everything happened. It was a news station. It was our <laughs> Facebook then, or you can call it the social media place those days as we were growing up. And that's my personal journey and fascination with water, with tabs. And yeah, when I look at that, for me, this story is similar to my own personal spiritual journey. First, I was fascinated by the tap, but the tap was dry. Okay, I was maybe hoping water would come out of that tap. Yes, and then next, I was fascinated with the water, that water was running out of this tap, right? But I wasn't allowed to play around there. And the water, whether it watered the vegetables, it was none of my business. I didn't care. I didn't. I wasn't concerned. I was disconnected. Third, I started disconnect. I mean, I started connection with the spring now because I could see the beauty of the spring and how beautiful it was. All my life was entrusted on other people's. Yeah, I was fed. I was taken care of. I didn't have to worry about anything. But I know, above all, it's God who was taking care of me with, I mean, through the people that he, he brought in my life. Today, I am fascinated by Jesus as the river of life. And that's where I want to bring you closer now. I'm fascinated also by the river of life mentioned in Revelation 22. And that's why I had to think about that story and really reflect and think, where can I start and set this scene? How can I set this scene? So Maggie Gadongo, you are familiar with Lemok, uh, but it's on the other side called Kaskisima, <laughs> on the other side where the deep was, near the place where Wagituro Kwamodongo, that's where the stream was, or rather that's where the spring was, and it, it kind of went down the, the valley into a stream it was very beautiful now that is one part of the story let me bring you to the second part of the story this will affect you and it's affecting me in a way the other part of the story is before i moved to an, my auntie's place i remember my mother chewing food yeah roasted potatoes and roasted bananas and she would chew this food for the baby <laughs> i remember i told you i had a younger sister and a younger brother so she would chew the food and then she would take the chewed food and give it to, yeah, she would give it to the babies. And I'm sitting there, a four-year-old, waiting also for this chewed food. Why she didn't give me unchewed food, I don't know. I just wanted the food that had been already chewed. And when I was in my teenage, my pride, <laughs> I was so disgusted by thinking about the way I was eating that food that had been chewed for me okay and i didn't like it but as time passed i appreciated that that was the time i was bonding with my mother because since i was five i was taken away from my mother's uh, and then i was brought up by my auntie and by my grandmother so when i remember those times when she used to chew food and give it to us it was the bonding moment and she fed us in the best way she knew she didn't have a food mixer a food blender we didn't have um food from the supermarket for the babies so she would chew and then she would give us the food and it tasted good them days except 
when I woke up in my pride in teenage and I'm thinking that was disgusting. That's what I was thinking. It's really disgusting. And Rose, you are saying it is so interesting learning about your childhood. Yes, it is interesting. And I can show you where it's going to connect with today's story. So today, yeah, I will be chewing for you. <laughs> Revelation 22. It may sound disgusting. It may sound like it doesn't make sense. It may sound very strange because one, I'm not an expert Bible scholar, but I read the Bible on my own and I do pray that I understand it the way I understand it, even before I look at other commentaries. So most of the things that I'll be telling you, I, don't, I haven't looked at the commentaries. I am just reading it and trying to understand it and relating to my own life and bringing my self-awareness into that book. So may I also encourage you, as we start to read this book of Revelation 22, please read it yourself and bring some ideas back to me. Bring it back to me so that we can be able to share and understand this book together. We are being discipled by Jesus. You and I together, we will be discipled. Instead of us waiting to be given food that has been chewed for us, or for you waiting for Esther to chew it for you and then put it in your mouth, then please let us read this together so that we can grow stronger as we mature together in this word of God. May I encourage you to read it, chew it yourself, so that uh, you can also tell your own stories, you can also relate it. And by the way, yeah, it is free. It is there. You don't have to pay anything to chew this word of God. If you want to go to the Bible college, that's up to you. But for me, I know this Bible is open for me and I can read it anytime to be able to understand. So thank you so much, Purity Mato. And thank you for listening because you are the one who suggested that we start from this book. So hopefully we will be reading together and understanding it together. So let me bring the topic now home. Yeah. So I have done the setting of the scenario. Scenario one is to do with water and food and where I was, I was less concerned about it. Scenario two is about my mom chewing the food for me. Yes. <laughs> and that one is about encouraging you not to let Esther chew the food for you or let another person chew the food for you. We will chew this food together. So if you've never read the Bible, yes. Revelation 22 is not a very big chapter. And by the way, I'll be taking bits by bits, so don't worry. So we don't have to just read it once and then we are not so sure what it means. So remember last week I said that the word of God is the mirror we use to reflect ourselves. And so far you have seen my own story re reflected in a way, but it's not quite brought here yet. But I will bring it in the book of Revelation. So bear with me as we grow together. We will see how it, it takes us through. So like I've already mentioned to you, the two scenarios, it wasn't any of my concern because I was too young in some of the scenarios. And sometimes for we Christians, some of us are too young in our Christian walk. We may not be able to understand quite a lot. So Paul says there is a time we take the milk and the baby food, but there's a time we take the meaty word of God. But I don't know where which stage you are at, but I believe we can grow together. We can grow together as we continue to kind of uh progress <laughs> so today i have decided maybe to stop from the physical needs and i'm extending us to go deeper into the spiritual needs so water food all the things i've mentioned the fruits and the things i was seeing around me they are physical needs at once but i want us to extend ourselves now deeper into the spiritual being things so that you can be able to see where i'm coming from with the spiritual potential be maximized so those problems i face those days i see them as a parallel in my spiritual life i do see them as a parallel in my spiritual life so take me back or let's go back and see so people don't have running water in the spirit today they could be going to a place looking for water looking for something that can quench their spiritual thirst but the taps are there just as a symbol but no water comes out so those taps could be running no i can't say running dry because they're not even running those taps are ever dry that means they will have an hygienic spiritual life they'll have an hygienic spiritual life people do rely on other people for information yes that's the other point i wanted to say so for example most of us sometimes we go on social media we go on google we go on wikipedia because 
they, they, they have already put the information there for us. But today I have tried to bring my own picture, my own story into this picture so that we can be able to see. Again, the third scenario was where the land where we used to go and get the water, it had been sold. So where there is clean, natural water, it had been fenced and the public are not able to access that water anymore. So church, for instance, we find that there are a lot of demands within the church environment sometimes. And one of the things that happens on a Sunday morning, for example, yeah, church services are scheduled for a couple of hours. We go there for a couple of hours. Everything is done religiously. It's fenced. There's a boundary. You can only stay here maybe for a couple of hours and then you move on because the service needs to move on. Okay, <laughs> so on a Saturday, for those who go to church on Saturday, for those who go on Sunday, church is scheduled so religiously. It's like that fenced public spring for me that's the way i feel sometimes so unless you go home and extend your learning i don't think uh one and a half hour food in fact it's 45 minutes sometimes the preacher stands up for 45 minutes if it goes so far it's one hour people can't stand preaching or teaching for more than an hour because i think they're so they have so many other things to do anyway that's the way i feel so I feel that fenced spring has been fenced so much that we don't get enough free water that we should be getting. So there is a hunger and a thirst for spirituality. I don't know about you, but that's what I feel. In my own life, I feel there is a hunger and there is a thirst. For me, I do hunger and I thirst and I do look for true word. I do look for teachers who teach pure word, who teach pure and a word of God that is not corrupted. I do kind of look for that, yeah? We can see how in big the industry, you know? I, we can see how big the spirituality industry, mindfulness, meditation, all these things are coming up, philosophy, they are coming up because people are hungering for their spirits to be fed. They are looking for all those. So to me, my former life, when I was a child and when I was growing and when I wasn't seeing water can be mirrored very well into the present time where there is no water and if there is water it's fenced out and if it's there there's a lot of religion and all that but there is great hope there is a lot a lot a lot of hope yeah there is a great hope because the God who was there he is the same God who is now and he'll always be God he has given us a hope and one of the hope that we see is in this revelation 22 so as we embark on today's topic think of how cities like london and cities like nairobi were developed think of how any other city even my own village how did they become developed they were developed around a spring or a river because the water source was there essential for supplying the needs of the village in the same way most of the cities nairobi and london when Christianity was developing, you will find that they built churches around those places. People were building churches around those places. Think of the Garden of Eden. There was water. So one of the things mentioned in the Garden of Eden, there is water mentioned there. So uh, Maggie says, Maggie Kathungu says, sure. And Tracy Mumbi says, that's a good way to think about it. Church can be like a public communal spring. It is. Church is a communal spring where we go and get the water. Remember, in our communal spring, that's where we also used to go and wash. That's where we used to go and get the news. That's where we used to go and get encouragement. When a woman had a baby in the village, all the other women gathered at the spring and they fetched water for this particular woman and they helped each other. So it was a true kind of a fellowship. Yes, it was a communal place. And Purity Matter says, true, there's a hunger for the word of God. So as we embark on this topic, I was saying, think of the big cities. They have been built around rivers. Think about the Garden of Eden. There were rivers flowing there. So when you have an opportunity to read Genesis 1, Genesis 2, and Genesis 3, you will see that there was water. Water was essential. There was food, plenty of it, in the book of Genesis. And they are basic, these are basic needs that God made sure that he had supplied them. They are not wants. Okay, we want food when we are hungry, but it's there. If we go out, we can find food and be able to get enough food to feed the whole world if people are not the way we are with capitalism and everything else. There is enough food in the world. 
but these are basic essentials in life and as i think of the ones sometimes the ones are not necessary but let's keep on moving god is concerned about each one of us he doesn't worry he doesn't want us to worry about these basics so remember those the, for those who are there last week i said for the maslow's hierarchy of need for those who know what maslow's hierarchy of need i have turned it upside down and i've said the most essential things that we should be concerned about and that's what god is mostly concerned about is sustaining our life so that we can live with him eternally so the most important thing we should be thinking about is our spiritual life starting from the priorities of this life that we are given can be sustained to go back to him fully <laughs> without any spiritual death for us to be able to live with him eternally but i'm going to get there shortly so god doesn't want us to worry about the basics because what he has supplied for us he has given us everything we need if this world could share what we need we can have enough food we can have enough water we can have every other physical resource we need in this life so remember jesus said to his disciples therefore i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or about your body or what you will wear but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well so jesus was saying let's seek the kingdom of god first and all these other things will be added to us and it is true if we seek god first and we follow his commands the way he wants us to follow them then we will not be lacking these other things because we will be knowing how to balance them amongst ourselves so as a child of god all our basics have been supplied he continues to supply all our basic needs this time round, I'm more self-aware of myself than I was when I was a child. And I am seeking the kingdom of God first. I don't know about you, then seeking my wants. The wants can come later. So I'm seeking the kingdom of God first. So may I ask you a question? Where are you at your journey? Where are you at your journey? I've told you a little bit of my journey. Where are you at your journey? Okay. Karibu sana, Lucy Maina. Karibu sana. Now, let me move on now to Revelation chapter 22 bringing it in the full context remember last week we were looking at what is it that people really really want have you ever asked your question yourself a question what is it that you really really want and we came up with a list from the forbes magazine and <laughs> there were so many of them about eight things and a few people had also given me some ideas remember mine i had chosen happiness out of the list it was number one on the list but I had upgraded that to joy because I know joy is something that does not depend on happenings. Happiness depends on what is happening. You know, that time I saw a tap having water gushing out, I was very happy. But the very moment I was told that I cannot play around that water, I wasn't happy. Okay, so happiness depends on the happenings. If things are happening very well and I'm feeling good about them, I am happy. But joy, it's a fruit of the spirit and it's a decision you can make regardless of the circumstances you could be going through. You can decide to be a joyful person because one, you think at a higher level, you're thinking God is the one who gives this gift of joy so I can choose to be joyous, okay, regardless of the circumstances. Good. Therefore, what I'm trying to say that there are so many wants in this life. But we discovered that however good all these desires were, our top desire was to be for God because he is the one who supplies all the other needs that we require. Before we think about what we want, we should desire God and that's where we got to through Jesus Christ. Now re let me now bring Revelation 22 for real. So where I say that we are going to begin at the end. Yeah, and I'm saying this because it's the outcome of the Bible. I believe Revelation 22 is the last thing that happens in the Bible. And I can see a few more points coming in. Yes, yeah, seeking first the kingdom of God and the rest will be added for me. That's Maggie Gadongo say. And then Luz, uh, Maina Bansimbogo, Karibu Sana. And Mumbi Tracy says, happiness depends on what is happening. That's really true. And then Lucy Maina said, I don't know, it's my phone, but it's breaking a lot. Yes, it's breaking a lot today. I think it's the Wi-Fi. So it's not your phone. I think it's my Wi-Fi that is not very strong. But we will get there. We will get there. It's not your phone. It's the Wi-Fi. So hopefully we will get the ideas together. Now we are rolling back into Revelation 22. 
I said that we will be starting at the end because it's the outcome. And we will use the word of God as the mirror. And remember the self-awareness definition is being conscious or knowing one's character and feelings. So knowledge is important, character is important, and feelings are important and they are all connected. Now, in the book of Revelation, let's get into the book of Revelation now. Who are we seeing here at the very beginning? What are we seeing? We are seeing, okay, the title on one of my NIV says it's Eden restored. So according to the writer, they, they, they see a picture of paradise or Eden being restored. But I'm going to leave the topic out. I'm looking at the book of Revelation at the very beginning. Yes, I'm hearing you well. Connection is fine on my side. Tracy Mumbi says connection is fine on her side. So I am seeing John, the writer of Revelation, as an observer and as well as the narrator of this story. You know, I have narrated my story and I have been observing things around me. And in this particular book, I see John observing as well as telling the story. Okay, we join him in this position of observation. We also join him in this position of narrating, but we can tell our own stories and our own experiences of how Jesus is revealed to us. We can be able to tell that kind of story. So John is being shown around heaven by an angel. So, and I believe angels are servants of God that God sends to minister to us. I don't believe in worshiping angels. So I don't believe that we should worship the angels. As we read Revelation 22, you will see that we are told not to worship the angels. Okay. So as we look at this story here, we will see that it's the angel that is taking John around heaven. Yeah. Or this renewed paradise. And like I've said, I believe God sends angels to minister to us. Even Jesus. Yeah. In one of the temptations. Yeah. He was told by the devil, you know, the angels come to minister to you. So you can throw yourself down, something like that. And anyway, we are not going there. So as we concentrate on this picture of the beginning of Revelation, we see the last two verses. Let me just go at the end so that at least we can also com come back to the beginning. We see the last verses showing that Jesus Christ was there too. Yeah, we will see also at the beginning of the chapter that Jesus Christ was there too. And the Bible says where Jesus is, his father is also there because they are one. So if you want to confirm this, you can read John chapter 10, verse 30. John chapter 10, verse 30 says, where his father is, he is also there because they are one. And that's why the Pharisees wanted to stone Jesus, saying, how can he call himself him with the God that they are one? Okay. Revelation 22 says also, he who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. So we join with them today and say, come Lord Jesus, the grace of the Lord be with God's people. Amen. So we want to welcome Jesus in, but we already see he's in this scene, but now coming back for us, we are also opening ourselves to him so that he can be invited in our lives starting from now and even if it's the end of the world he's still welcome to come in and bring us home with himself to this new paradise so as we study or listen to the book of revelation i pray that the grace of god through jesus christ will be flowing through each one of us so that we can be able to understand this okay so when you look at the generation gone by yeah you know when jesus say he's coming soon people think Oh, we've been waiting. We've been waiting. We've been waiting. Why is this life not coming to an end? But compared to the vastness of eternity, our history of the world compare, compared to the vastness of eternity, I mean, soon is, can, can be very shrunk into a kind of just a flash of a moment. Okay? Because time is timeless in eternity. Time is untimed in eternity. So whether you think soon will be somewhere there when I'm 100 years old or somewhere there when our forefathers were 100 years, soon can be any time. So do not forget this. Yeah, this is one of the verses in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Second Peter, Peter chapter 3, 8, it says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. 
And in Psalms 90 verse 4, it says, A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. So it matters of time, and with God, time just goes very fast. So whatever we are calling soon can happen soon in our human mind, or it can happen as if it's eternity with God. Don't worry about the soon. Let's worry about the state of our self-awareness right now. Let's worry about our state of self-awareness, our character. Are we ready when Jesus comes? Are we ready? <laughs> how are we feeling about it? If the day the world was to end today, how are you feeling? Will you be scared to go and meet Jesus? Or will you be confident to go and meet Jesus? How are you feeling about it? How is your character in connection to the likeness of Jesus? That's my question. Don't worry about the soon because soon can be any soon, any time. Okay, let's go back at the beginning now. Hopefully this is now going to flow. And I think I'll only cover two verses for today as the time is really moving. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life clear as crystal flowing from the throne of god and of the lamb that's revelation 22 verse 1. at the first instance very first instance we see the angel and then we see the river of life and then we see how this river of life appears very crystal clear those are the things we first see and it's beautiful and we think we have arrived in heaven because the angels are there the river of life is there and it's very beautiful so everything is beautiful taking you back to my village days everything appeared to be very beautiful and i was happy because everything was appearing so good but was it everything it wasn't everything so <laughs> as we kind of look through into this yeah we can see that the angels again are the servants of god that are serving in this scenario and in the Bible, you will see that the angels were serving in many, many scenarios. In the Garden of Eden, there were angels, particularly the ones that were left guarding the tree of life. We see Mary being ministered to an angel when she was being told about the good news about uh, being expectant with Jesus. Uh, we see here the angel with John. <laughs> yeah, we see angels. If you read the Bible, you will find so many scenario, scenarios that the angels visited. Yeah, even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament as well. We also come across passages of rivers in the Bible, so many passages of rivers in the Bible. From Eden, like we had mentioned earlier, there is a river or there are rivers there. In the book of Psalms, there are so many rivers mentioned there. In the book of Proverbs, there are so many rivers mentioned there. In the book of Ezekiel, there are rivers mentioned there. And in Revelation, again, there are so many rivers mentioned there. So a river symbolizes many aspects of life. So let's take the symbolism of this as well as the reality of this. A river can represent our way, a passage, yeah, because this river is flowing from the throne room of God and it's causing this passage in between the city, it's flowing. And for those people who have been in London, you will know that there is a river Thames, yeah, and it was used as a carriageway where transport could be used for moving goods from one place or moving people from one place to the other. The same with Nairobi, there was Nairobi River and all that. So a river can be a passageway or a way. A river can represent freedom because it's free, free, I mean free flowing, free flowing, that's what I mean. A river is a sustenance for life, like we've already established. A river sustains plants and the plants can become food. Both humans and animals can use the river for sustenance of life. A river is beautiful. A river kind of, yeah, removes the thirst. That's where we drink from. A river is there for cleansing. So a river and the water, they serve so many purposes. And it's beautiful. So note in all of these points that I'm mentioning, freedom, sustenance, way. Yes, Jesus has been depicted in all this. And that's another study of the day, the, the, the day another study of another day. That's what I meant. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the water of life. Jesus is the giver of freedom. Jesus, he gives us all these things that I've mentioned that water can give. In short, the water here symbolizes eternal life. And the Garden of Eden, if you could read Genesis 2 verse 10, it shows another river flowing through it. 
And in the book of Ezekiel, when you have an opportunity to read Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 7 to 12, you will see also Ezekiel seeing a vision of river symbolizing life and refreshing. So river, water, all these things represent life and eternal life. And that's what is coming from the throne room of God. Also in the Bible, we see a lot of passages talking about life. And although life <laughs> did not appear on the list of the Forbes magazine or Forbes website that I had used, even when I was asking people, none of them mentioned that they would like life on that list as some of the things they desire. Nobody mentioned that. So although it did not appear on my list of wants, it is one of the greatest wants we have or the greatest desires we have in this life. We may be consciously or subconsciously be aware of this want and we would say it's more than a want it's an essential it's a necessity in this life it's only that sometimes we don't think about it much because it's like automatic it's you wake up in the morning and you don't think about it but life is one of the essential needs and i'm going to tell you that's why you eat your food because you want to sustain life that's why you go to your doctors because you want to sustain life that's why you do all most of the things that you do because you want to sustain this life. Apart from the things that we own externally, one of the things we want to do, we take breakfast, we take lunch, and now we do healthy eating because we want to sustain life. And I don't know why it was missed out on that particular list. By the way, people want to live eternally. Women, they are using all the products to make sure their skin stays supple and soft, no wrinkles. People don't want to die. They go to hospitals because they want to be treated and remain healthy. Why? Because nobody wants to die. We all want to be alive and healthy and all that. Why? Because again, God has set eternity in our lives somehow. In as much as we know this physical life will not be forever, we do think of eternity. We want to live eternally. So, you know. The life preservation industry is a very big industry. The health industry is a very big industry. Everybody wants to preserve life. Life in itself is a gift from God, as we read in Genesis 1. Everything that God created was good. The humans that God created was good. Therefore, life is good. And to, desi to desire life, to want life, it's a very, very good thing because it's a gift we were given by God. So we sustain it. And we want it forever and ever. In addition, there's a, a guy called the teacher or the preacher. Sometimes you call him Ecclesiastes or sometimes you call him Solomon. He said this, God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. There is something God has created here. And ours is to live in this life. We know whether we die in the physical, we still want to live forever. We do desire that. So human beings want to stay alive. They want to stay alive, however challenging it is. We want to keep on breathing. There we go. So I have finished with the first part of that Revelation 1, 22 verse 1. And it's talking about the water. It's talking about the river. It's talking about life. It's talking about, yes, where it's coming from now. That's where we are going. So the first verse was, I mean, the first part was, then the angel showed me, or there was an angel as well. The angel showed me a river with the water of life. So there was an angel, which is fascinating. There was a river, which is fascinating because it's the water of life coming from that river. It's very beautiful, crystal clear, pure, flowing from the throne of, of God. So in as much as the river is important, it would not be there if it wasn't for the source. So look at where the river is coming from. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It's coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So in as much as the river is important, as much as it's beautiful, as much as it's pure, yeah, it wouldn't be, be there if the source wasn't there. So the most important part here, it's not the gift of life, but the giver of life. I want you to take that home with you. If there is anything you're going to take home with you today. So the most important thing here is not necessarily the gift of life. Gift of life is good, but the most important, the best part of it is the giver of life. 
without the giver, without the source, then the river of life would not be there. Without the giver, without the giver of life, we would not be there. So, <laughs> so I believe in our spiritual reality, we need God's spirit. Remember, we do say God is spirit. So we need God's spirit to be able to keep our spirit alive. We can only rely on that God's spirit to keep us alive. We cannot continue flowing in the fullness, in the abundance of life if we don't value or we don't see the source of this life. Okay? So we really want spiritual life. That's what Purity Matu says. And this is what we are yearning for, spiritual life. Amen, amen. And unless we sit down and think of it, think about the source of where this life is coming from then be able to honor that source, be able to thank that source, be able to appreciate that God has started, has started something beautiful in our lives. Okay, all these things seem very symbolic, but it's the reality of life. Because once we are transitioned from this life, we will be able to see these things even brighter. We'll be able to see these things even clearer. Our bodies and our souls are limited to these levels at the moment. But by faith, we can access these things. By faith, we can access eternal life. And we can access eternal life beginning now. For we know who and we know how. So we know God and we know how to access God through Jesus Christ. We can be able to access this. Look at this. One of the verses that we read so regularly and just superficially is this one. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only uh, begotten son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish. God loves us so much because he wanted to make sure that our spiritual life has been sustained. Remember, it's coming from the throne room. There is God and the lamb. So remember, for those who know what Jesus did on the cross, he was the lamb that was crucified for us. So God gave this lamb to die for us so that we can be rescued into life once again and be, we can be sustained into this spiritual life. Another book, 1 John chapter 5, 11 to 12 says this, and this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So when you look at this throne room, where the life is flowing from, there is God the father, there is God the son. God has given the sun for our own sake so that we can be drawn closer. We can drink from this river of eternal life. But if we do not believe in Jesus, then we cannot have access to God. And there are so many other verses we can read that tell us the same, same story. So note God and the sun, the sun is symbolized as the, as the lamp. They were both at the throne. They are one. So when you think about what you really, really want in future, I would like you to be able to think of the reason why, and you need to think also of the root or the motive of why you are wanting this particular thing. You will realize that the what you want may be just very superficial, very minimal, very, how can I say, minute compared to the image of God compared to the being that gives us life. Yes. So I would like us to focus on the giver of life. I would want us to focus on the source of the river. Okay. Now remember Jesus in one of the occasions. He used this imagery of water of life with the Samaritan woman. When you have time go and read John chapter 4 verses 7 to 14. You will see Jesus say to the Samaritan woman. I am the water of life. And whoever drinks for me will never be thirsty again. And in combining now the whole verse, you know, the whole Revelation 22 verse 1, we see the Bible shows that, there's, that there is a fullness of life with God. Yes, the whole verse shows us that there is a fullness of life with God accompanied with eternal blessings that come from him when we believe in him and allow him to satisfy our spiritual thirst. When we decide to follow Jesus, he gives us the water of life, bringing healing and restoration. You will see that as we move on to the next verse, not today, but you will see there was a tree of life growing on each side and the leaves were bringing healing. So I won't go there for now because I'm looking at time and I don't want to keep you for too long. So when you think of what you really, really want, remember 
to place God as the priority of everything else, place him at the highest place, and therefore you can be able to see the bigger picture and get everything. When you have the son, Jesus Christ, you have everything. Yes? <laughs> so let's look upon Jesus. Let's look up and receive this Jesus. So however difficult these things may be to fathom them, remember, we can access them by faith. We can only access them by faith. And then through that faith, we can bring these realities to the realities. Now, John was seeing this thing in the spirit. Our bodies limit us in seeing some of the things in the spirit. But by faith, we are able to access some of these things. So evidently, life is good. Yes, and God has made it to be good. And he wants everything to be good at the end. So in another place, the Bible says this. And we know that all things work together for good. All things work for good for those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Tonight, today, this morning, whatever time it is, you're listening to me because all things have worked together for good. Because you have been purposed for God and God has purposed this for you. So one of the characteristics that is obvious that is coming out of this little discussion is that there is a goodness from the beginning of Genesis, there will be a goodness at the end. And the best part of it is that God is the God of goodness. He's the one who is really covering everything for us. We don't need to do so much. The son has died for us. We can believe in him. We can watch as the things unfold in our lives. And he has taken care of us. So now all this goodness has come from God. By just looking at one verse <laughs> in Revelation 22. And we can clearly see that the desiring of gift of life is not good enough. We need to desire to know the giver of the gifts. We should desire a godly life. This is because the river of life flows from God. The river symbolizes a continuous flow of God's presence, life's blessings, life's promises or God's promises and every good and perfect gift. God and Jesus are the sources of all this. I'm already excited. I'm, I am only at verse 1. I'm already excited. So let me say this as I come to finish. Knowing God and Jesus intimately means we have eternal life. Let me quote that from the Bible, from the prayer that Jesus made for his disciples, of whom you and I are. So if you read the book of John, chapter 17, verse 3, it will say clearly, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, God the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So eternal life can start now, but how do we start it now? We start it by faith, by trusting that whatever God says is true, by trusting that these pictures that John saw, they were true. And one day when we are over this physical aspect of our life, we will be able to meet God face to face. And I think I'm going to stop there for now. <laughs> yes. And as I bring everything together, yes, we may desire heaven. I used to say I desire to go to heaven because I want to escape hell. No, 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 no. I have changed my mind. It's not just about heaven. I want one day to be able to meet my God, my maker face to face. Meanwhile, my job here is to cultivate or rather seek that awareness of him god awareness as i seek my self-awareness i must seek the presence of god in my life so whom have i in heaven i think you have heard of that verse saying whom have i in heaven but you there is nothing on earth that i desire besides you we want to reach to that point where we say who do i have in heaven but you and there's nothing else on earth that, that, that I desire besides you. And that is in Psalm 73, verse 25. Our life flows from God through Jesus Christ. It is Jesus who gives us the right standing with God. He is the lamb who was slain. Note the river was crystal clear because it is pure. Yes, it is not easy for us to give ourselves that righteousness. But God has given us righteousness right standing with God because of the sacrifice that Jesus has paid for us. So Jesus said, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal 
life. And as I was thinking of this topic, I remember there's a verse that says, we are seated in the heavenly places with him. So by faith, we can start sitting in the heavenly places with God. We can be able to sit in that source of the river of life and be able to be a source of life for other people, leading them to eternal life. Yes, he has blessed. <laughs> the Bible also says in Matthew 5 verse 6, he also said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I think I'm going to stop there because I'm getting excited now. Yes, <laughs> we may face challenges. Why? Because at the beginning, of course, we will be going there to see the tree of knowledge of good and evil where we failed. But the tree of life was there at the beginning. So another day we'll be discussing that by going back to Genesis and see how did this go wrong? Why did we lose our way? But God is still God and he's a wonderful God. I think I should stop there. So if you have any question, please post the question to, to me. Otherwise, Tracy Mombi says, true. Jesus also said he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. And Maggie Kadungu, you're saying, amen, amen. And Purity Matu, you're saying, amen, amen. And, oh, yes, I want to meet my maker. God, help me to make it. We will make it. By faith, we will make it. So the starting point now is to put the priorities right. Where are our priorities? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And who is in the kingdom of God? It's God our Father. Let's have a good relationship, not just good a relationship, a wonderful relationship with our Father. Then all these other things will just become bonuses. They will be additionals. Yeah. When we make our way right with God, we win. It's a win win game. So hopefully we have made a good start with Revelation chapter twenty two, at least one of the verses we've read. Next time we'll be looking at verse 2 and maybe continue the whole chapter. I don't want to tire you because I set the scenery. Yes, we start where we are ignorant of many things. We start where we do not know anything. We start where we just wish for things. We start where we just want to play with things. We start where we need other people to chew the food for us until we get where we know we can directly go to the throne room of God because the veil was broken and one of these days i will teach on what the veil was and how it was broken otherwise god bless you so much thank you so much for joining in and thanks for the word of god esther and rest uh, yeah and the rest of the viewers uh, purity matu is saying thank you so much thank you so much otherwise i'm so thankful for everyone who joined tonight I know there was another event, maybe that's where people had been gone to the other event, there was a funeral. And we do pray for those who are not feeling very well at the moment because out of this tree of life, yeah, the leaves are there for the healing of the nation. So I'm sending a prayer and a word of healing to everybody who is not feeling well. For those who are grieving because they've lost the loved ones, I'm also praying that God will comfort them with the comfort that comes from above. Otherwise, Asante Nisana, no Apenda Sana, God bless you. I love you so much. Thank you so much for joining me this evening from where I am, this day from where you are, the Americans, and this evening again from the Kenyans. Anytime where you are, we are a global program. So thank you so much for joining in and for adding your comments. Asante Nisana, God, God, God bless you. Otherwise, no Apenda Sana, I love you. I love you, everyone. Thank you.